tet is bringing us the year of the eye and the serpent. The eye and the serpent. So which side of the serpent are you going to fall on in this year? Are you going to be that person that is a perpetrator of evil? Or are you going to be that person who has the wisdom and the prudence and the heart for God to trust you with kingdom revelation? Listen, again, this is Keith Moore. God bless you. Let me, let me pray for you just for a moment before we leave. Father, we pray now that you would bring understanding to your people. That, Lord God, in this year, you're going to send us forth with the wisdom of the serpent, but the harmlessness of the dove. We thank you for that key to discipleship. We thank you, Lord God, that you're sending in, watch, oh God, you're sending in new souls, new people to be a part of what you're doing in this kingdom season. We thank you now for your revelation as it goes forth in your people. We ask you to open up the eyes of their discernment. Help them to mature and understand and see the kingdom by reason of exercise. Even as you said of your children in the book of Hebrews, that they learned, they matured, and they gained discernment by reason of exercise. So, Father, help us to see the enemy. And then, Father, give us the strategies to deal with everything that comes against us. Help us to have financial strategies and family strategies and marriage strategy and kingdom strategy on how we're going to advance the kingdom in the earth. Let each mountain of our lives represent you well through our families, through our finances, through, through our jobs, occupationally, whatever, wherever we stand, Father God, we need your strategy. So release God, a intent unto us in this prophetic season, that we may see the enemy, the snake in the grass, and have revelation on how to handle it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Welcome to Taking the Kingdom with Samuel and R.C. Blakes, Jr. This is an outreach of the New Home family of churches. Taking the Kingdom is the prophetic ministry of Bishop Robert Blake, Sr. since 1964. Today, the mantle and mission has passed to his sons, R.C. Blakes, Jr. and Samuel Blakes. Together, they are bringing the full gospel to a world dead in religion, teaching the word of God to the saints, raising up powerful churches, and demonstrating the power of the Spirit to a world in bondage. Put Satan on notice. We are... Taking the kingdom. Blessings and favor to you, my friends. What a blessing and privilege it is uh, to be able to come into so many living rooms, hospital rooms, bedrooms, uh, wherever you are, even to those who are behind prison bars. I got good news for you. You may be locked in, but the Holy Ghost is not locked out. God can reach you right where you are. Thank you for tuning in. You have tuned in on the right day for the right word. God has a word that is divinely orchestrated and designed to bring change to your life. I want you to sit back, fasten your seatbelts. We're going into the sanctuary of New Home Ministries, and uh, God's getting ready to bless you. Let's go in. God bless. Not going to be long, I promise. I preached hard in Baton Rouge, so, you know, such as I have, give I unto thee. Joshua 3 and 5. Uh, I want to talk to you just for a few minutes. God tells Joshua to tell the people something that is so important as they get ready to cross over into a different arena, as they get ready to cross over. Um, their crossing over really symbolizes our crossing over tonight. And God tells Joshua to tell the people something. And as Joshua told them, I tell you tonight. In Joshua 3 and 5, the Lord simply said this. He said, uh, through Joshua, he says, Joshua told the people to sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will work wonders among you. Different version says, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Sanctify yourselves. If you don't mind, touch them to a neighbor. Tell them as you go into this new year, the word is very simple. Tell them sanctify yourself. And what is sanctification? Sanctification is the process of, by which you and I uh, become more like our God. 
it ought to be the desire of every believer. You know, somehow the desire, Pastor Payton, of the, of the believer has been watered down in the church today. And what we desire are temporary things. We desire, we come to church and we come to God looking for cars, houses, and things. But the ultimate desire of every believer should be to live and lead a sanctified life. Can I tell you something about sanctification? Sanctification is not what you think it is. Uh, when I was a kid, there was a certain church that we passed by, and, and when we passed by, we'd say, that's that sanctified church. That's that sanctified church. How many of y'all remember that? That's the sanctified church. Uh, and we called them sanctified because they wore long dresses and tied their heads up and didn't wear makeup. And we said, that's that sanctified church. But the truth is, sanctification has nothing to do with what you got on you. It has everything to do with what you have in you. And the sad reality is many of us are dressed up on the outside while we're messed up on the inside. And as a kid, we always said, that's that sanctified church. And the truth is, every church ought to be a sanctified church. If you don't mind, tell somebody, tell me, I want to be a part of a sanctified church. Sanctification is our gift back to God. God gives us our lives. And sanctification is literally us giving that life back to God. Saying, now Lord, you take me and you make me what you want me to be. Joshua tells the people, he says, this is the prerequisite. He says, man, can I just talk to y'all tonight? He says, God wants to do amazing things for you, amazing things in you. God wants to do amazing things through you, but this is the prerequisite. You got to sanctify yourself. Now, uh, uh, we understand that, you know, we cannot sanctify ourselves, but what we can do is, is prepare ourselves for the sanctification process. God does the work. We make the preparation. I'm going to say it again. God, Everybody say it with me. Say, God does the work. But look at somebody tell me, I got to make the preparations. Now, how do I prepare myself to be sanctified? Because I really want God to do these wonderful things. How many of you need God to do something special this year? Wait a minute. Anybody in here need God to do something special? In? How many of y'all need something at your house? Come on. If you don't, lift your hand because I'm coming home with you. I need God to show up for me in a very special way. I need God, Dr. Payton, I need God to work wonders for me. And Joshua said the prerequisite is this. He says, you do what you're supposed to do, and when you do what you're supposed to do, you ignite the hand of God to do what he's supposed to do. So the preparation is up to me. How do, I, how, do I, how do I prepare to live a sanctified life? First thing, write this down. First thing I got to do is I got to understand that sanctification happens through the rigorous study of the Word. I got to get in the Word, and the Word's got to get in me. I got to get in the Word, the Word's got to get in me. Can I tell y'all something? Your entire experience with the Word cannot just be what you get from me on Sunday and Tuesdays. Huh? The only time you read your Bible cannot be when I tell you turn here or turn there. You got to do what Paul admonishes Timothy to do when he says, study. Show yourself, prove a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Everybody say, I got to study. 
I got to get in the word and the word has to get in me. See, because when the word gets in me, the word begins to change my appetite for sin. A lot of y'all wondering why you can't win your battle against sin and you can't kick your habits and you can't overcome your struggles. It might be because you ain't got no word in you. Y'all done got quiet on me. Do you know Jesus prayed right before going to the cross? And this is what he prayed. Sanctify them through your truth. Listen to what he says in John 17, 17. He says, sanctify them through your truth because your word is true. He says when the word comes in, the word demands sanctification. It is impossible, brothers and sisters, to stay under the word without your life changing. That's why I tell people when, you know, I, 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 at one point I had members who were running folk out of the church because they didn't like the way they were dressed and didn't like the way they were coming to church. And I told them, let them keep, let them keep coming. <laughs> Listen, and this is why you let them keep coming. You let them keep coming and let them stay under the word. And as the word comes in, you're going to discover dress codes are going to change. Mindsets are going to change. Okay. Listen, you haven't always been where you are. <laughs> Huh? And, and the only reason you are where you are is because the word took up residence on the inside of you and changed you. And the same word that changed you is going to change these young people. If you don't mind, just tell somebody, tell them, tell them, leave me alone and let the word work on me. Because sanctification is a process. You know, the Bible says that you and I, like newborn babies, like newborn babies, we should crave the sincere milk of the word. Like a baby craves the bottle, you ought to crave the Bible. A, a baby craves the bottle so much that he's thinking about that bottle when he's sleeping. That's how that mama knows, slip, slip that bottle. Huh? In, the, in his sleep, he starts thinking about the bottle. You ought to crave the word of God so much that in your sleep, you start thinking about the word. And as you, as you think on the things of God, the word begins to change your heart, begins to change your mind, and it begins to change your nature. Talking to somebody in this room, the problem with some of y'all, man, is uh, you, you've gotten too comfortable forgotten the things that got you saved. You've forgotten the things that got you delivered. When you first got saved, you were on fire calling everybody, talking about what Bible should I, should I buy? Now you don't read none of them. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. I'm going to talk. And I'm going to talk just like I feel. I ain't straining nothing. You and I like the alcoholic craves the bottle, the wordaholic ought to crave the Bible. When I come to church, I should not come for entertainment. I should not come just for excitement. I wish I had some help in now. See, the problem with a whole lot of y'all is you want to dance to the music, you want to clap to the choir, but you want to sleep on the message. And the only thing that is going to save you is the word of God. The only thing that is going to change you is the word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word. Can I preach like I feel? I dare you to touch somebody. Tell them, neighbor, I got a word for you. Tell them if they don't sing one note, if the musicians don't play one note, if they don't sing one song, just give me a word that's going to change my heart and change my mind and change my desires. So if I'm going to be sanctified, first thing I got to do is I got to, I got to, I got to rigorously study the word of God. When's the last time you picked up your Bible? outside of church. Huh? When's the last time you picked up your Bible and, and wasn't nobody standing over you talking about turn here? 
and turn there and, and look at this and look at that. When's the last time you took the initiative to getting your word for yourself? Nothing changes you like the word. Listen, um, second thing that has to happen if you're going to walk in sanctification, write this down. Second thing is you need a rigorous prayer life. The problem with some of y'all is you're studying, but you ain't praying. You read your Bible, but you don't talk to your God. And, and get this, when you read your Bible and you don't talk to your God, you don't understand what you read. It's quiet up in here. See, listen, you got to have a prayer life. Jesus said to his disciples, I'm preaching just like this. Jesus said to his disciples, before he went to the cross, listen to what he says to them. He says, watch and pray. Why, why do you want me to watch and pray? He said, Mark 14 and 38. He says, watch and pray. Why do you want me to watch and pray? He says, you need to watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. Why do you want me to watch and pray so they don't fall into temptation? He says, because your spirit is willing, but your flesh ain't, come on, how many, how many honest folk do I have in this room that will admit your flesh is, is still a mess? I dare you to tap somebody, tell them, neighbor, I got a word for you. Tell them my flesh is still a mess. You know, some of y'all want to act like once you got saved, you know, uh, men don't look good and women don't look good. The devil is a liar. They look better. But just tell somebody, tell them, neighbor, I got a word for you. Tell them, that's why I need something on the inside to help to control my outside because my spirit is willing but my flesh is weak. So he said, look, he says, you got to have a prayer life. Jesus had previously told Peter and, and the other disciples that they would deny him. He had already told them they would deny him. However, Christ also taught them how not to fall to the temptation. But the problem was, when it was time to pray, they wanted to sleep. I, I'm going to say it again. The problem was, when it was time to pray, they wanted to sleep. And listen, there's something you will know about prayer. This is what I want you to think about. You know, some folks say, well, don't, don't matter how long you pray. Sometimes it does. See, there's some stuff you're going to go through. Now I lay me down to sleep. I ain't going That, look at somebody tell me, that ain't going to get this one. See, see, these kind come out, Jesus says, by fasting and praying. See, sometimes you're going to have to labor in prayer. Jesus said to them, no, this can't be no 15-second prayer. He says, I need you to watch with me for one hour. I need you to spend an hour in prayer. Because if you pray in private, you'll have power in public. Some of y'all ain't got no power in public because you won't do no praying in private. That's why when you get up and sing, we hear you, but we don't feel you. Can I preach like I feel? Touch somebody, tell neighbor, tell them I got a word for you. Tell them you need a prayer life. You need a discipline of prayer. You need a discipline of prayer. You need to pray every day. The Bible said men ought to always pray. And the reason you need to pray every day is because you're trying to break spirits off of your life that been on you for 20 and 30 years. They needed a disciplined prayer life. This prayer was not quick. This prayer was disciplined. And Jesus prayed for an hour, but he could not get them to watch with him. This is, the, this is the sad thing about the average church in America. The average church in America can get a thousand folk in a musical and can't get ten folk in a prayer meeting. But you will never have 
talking to you like this because I want you to get this. You will never have a sanctified life without a prayer life. If you don't mind, touch somebody and ask them, when was the last time you prayed? Listen, Jesus says that if you pray, you won't fall. Let me ask you, how many times in 2018 have you stumbled? Stumbled into frustration, stumbled into depression, stumbled into anger, stumbled into pride, stumbled into lust because you were not disciplined in your prayer life. If, if, we're, if we're not going to succumb to temptation, we must find time and space to pray. I wish I had some. If, if my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then I will hear from heaven. Brothers and sisters, if you and I are going to experience sanctification, we got to do the preparation. Uh, we got to pray. We got to study. We got to pray. Third thing, we got to have, if we're going to live sanctified lives, write this down. You got to have godly fellowships. If you don't mind, look at somebody and ask them who you're rolling with. <laughs> who are the fellows on your ship? We've done all our shouting. I won't talk to you tonight. A lot of y'all have friendships that are ungodly. You are connected to people who have no God consciousness. You're, you're connected to people who have religion without relationship. But according to Proverbs 27 and 17, he says, iron sharpens iron. And a man ought to sharpen the countenance of his friend. If you don't mind, catch somebody's hand, look them in the eye, and ask them, do your friends make you better? As a matter of fact, touch the friend you came with tonight and ask them, do you make me better? Are you a benefit or are you a detriment? Are you building me or are you breaking me? Are, are you a blessing or are you a burden? Because sanctification often happens through fellowship. You show me who you're rolling with, I'll show you where you're going to. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. And a lot of y'all are crazy enough to think you can lay down with dogs and you ain't going to catch fleas. Joshua says to those people, he says, sanctify yourself because tomorrow, sanctification, I got to get in the word. The word has to get in me. I got to have a prayer life. Thirdly, I need godly fellowships. Who, who are your accountability brothers and sisters? Who do you have in your life? that calls you, let, let me ask you this, do you have any friends in your life that calls you just to pray? Now I know you got something that call you to gossip. I know you got something that will call you and serve up the tea. Y'all looking at me, but I don't know whether you're feeling me or not. Do you have anybody in your life that will call you, and when you pick up the phone, they say, girl, I just called you to pray. Close your eyes. Many of 
us, brothers and sisters, are in fellowship with the wrong people and consequently because uh, you hang with your old crew, you never experience a new you. about your company? <laughs> Who are you accountable to? Who, who holds you accountable? L l listen, brothers and sisters, it ought to be your aim to develop Christian friendships. There's a problem, listen, listen, there's a problem when you're in a new place and you ain't got no new friends. Ain't none of your friends, didn't none of your friends come to church with you tonight? And the one you brought sleep? Hunch him right now, tell him, wake up, wake up. That man talking about you, come on, hunch him, tell him, wake up. Listen, listen, I'm almost done. Your fellowship has a lot to do with where you go as a believer. In fact, this is the primary method of spiritual discipline. Uh, Paul had in mind when he was addressing the, the Philippian church, uh, he, he, he has in mind fellowship. When he talks to the Philippian church, uh, he talks of, to them about their connections and their, their, their covenants. He talks to them about who they are connected to because your connection can propel you or your connections can stifle you. Some of y'all need to make up your mind right now. Some of the relationships you have. I know you enjoyed the word today. Um, it's amazing how God can tailor a word uh, to fit your situation. Somebody, while I was teaching the word of God today, you were saying to yourself, this man is talking to me. He is talking to me. He is talking about me. But I want you to know it was not me talking to you. It was not me talking about you. It was God speaking to your heart, your mind, and your spirit, letting you know that he knows your dilemma. He knows where you are. He knows your situation. And if he knows about it, he can do something about it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about about God. I'm excited about what's getting ready to happen for you. Uh, amazing things are getting ready to happen for you. Amazing doors are getting ready to open. God's getting ready to send provision and protection to your life like you have never seen before. I'm telling you, I'm speaking prophetically that this, my brother, this, my sister, is your time and your turn. God's getting ready to bless you. I want you to sit down. I want you to call the number at the bottom of the screen. There are counselors that are waiting to pray with you and stand in the gap for you. Uh, these are persons who have consecrated their lives simply for the purpose of getting a prayer through on your behalf. So sit down and call the number at the bottom of the screen. Uh, I want to see you in one of our new home locations uh, this Sunday morning. It's going to be amazing. If you're in Baton Rouge, I want to see you in Baton Rouge. That Baton Rouge church is growing by leaps and bounds. People are constantly being added to the fold. Uh, if you're in New Orleans, I want to see you in New Orleans. We have several services that will meet your need. If you're on the West Bank, go and see my brother, uh, Bishop Leroy Phoenix. If you are in Hammond, uh, go and see Pastor Nakia McKay. Uh, there is a new home near you. And if there is not one, I promise you there's one coming soon. I love you today. Listen, maybe you're unsaved and you don't know God. Pray this simple prayer with me and God's going to come into your heart. Your life will never be the same. Bow your head, close your eyes, and pray this prayer with me. Father God, come into my heart. Take over my life. I surrender my members to you. I surrender my life to you. I ask you now to wash me, cleanse me, make me whole and holy. And I thank you now, God, that I am saved 
I am saved. Yes, I'm saved in Jesus' name. I love you, my brother. I love you, my sister. If you prayed that prayer from the top of your heads to the soles of your feet, you're saved, you're saved, you're saved. Now what you need is a great place of fellowship. And one single service at New Home Ministries will change your life forever. God bless you. Go with God. And watch God go with you. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. Are you looking for an accredited school to enroll your child in? If so, then Life Institute Christian School is indeed your school. Life Institute Christian School serves grades K-12 and utilizes an individualized accelerated Christian education curriculum that allows the student to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Enrolling your child in Life Institute Christian School will leave them with an experience that they can proudly share with others. Allow your child to obtain a valuable education here at Life Institute Christian School on the campus of Word of Life Community Church. For more information about the school, call 251-456-2652. Attention all users of the dangerous blood thinners, Xarelto or Perdaxa. If you or someone you love are one of the thousands of blood thinner users that may have been exposed to the serious risks caused by these medications, including internal bleeding, you need to call Guardian Legal Network now. There are time deadlines to file your claim, so don't wait. If we don't win, you pay nothing, so call to speak to your experienced attorney now. Call 800-769-5002. It's empowerment. It's laughter. It's living. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. It's the Renata Collins Love and Wisdom Television Show. Starring the beautiful, the bold, the fairest of them all, Renata Collins. Well, thank you guys so much for being here with the Renata Collins Love and Wisdom Show. This week, we're going to have a great show. And it's very personal to me. A devastating time in my life, which um, occurred in 2000. So today, I'm going to share you guys just a little bit about what happened. In 2000, I was in a train accident. That's right. And I was drugged 110 feet from um, the place in where I first was hit and for that situation it caused me to have not auto appearance defect but most of my things are mental like sometimes with memory loss sometimes I can't remember so many different things but what really touched me is because people go through devastations hard times and we just don't know how to bounce back so this show today on the Renata Collins Love and Wisdom Show, we're going to speak to other survivors, others who have went through devastation and are still surviving. They're going to be with us here today. So sit back and relax. The Renata Collins Love and Wisdom Show. Come on down to the Nola Palms Hall. We're located at 5961 Bullard Avenue in New Orleans, Louisiana. Let us host your anniversary party, bachelorette party, bridal party, graduation party, wedding reception, birthday party, baby shower, your birthday party, and more. Your event happens at the Nola Palms. And let them know, it's your girl Renata Collins from the Love and Wisdom Show. That's you. Are you ready for real talk with real people? It's me, your girl Renata Collins. Come out to be a part of my live studio audience. Let's talk success and failure, love and wisdom, and so much more. For more information, go to www.renatacollinstv.com. Every Monday morning for 5.30 a.m. Tune in to be inspired. Tune in to be cultivated. Tune in because you love real talk with real people. And that's the Renata Collins Love and Wisdom Show. Did you know that each Dickie's Barbecue Pit is locally owned by your very own pit master? 
We smoke our meats on site every day. Hold up, I love this part. Chopped or sliced, piled high on a toasted bun, and call it done. It's not processed, it's a process, and has been since 1941. Come to Dickie's, where we speak barbecue. Welcome back to the Renata Collins Love and Wisdom Show, where we're talking about surviving. Many times we survive school, we survive our parents, we survive jobs, we survive so many different things. And like I said earlier, I survived the train accident. So, you know, but many people we deal with survival in many different ways. So today, I have a great survivor and her son that's on the stage. We have Ms. Trakeisha Sanders and we have Trey Juan Sanders. And they're here today because they have a story of survival. So, how are you doing today, Miss? I'm fine. Well, thank you so much. You're looking good. Thank you, too. Thank Most, you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Most people probably wouldn't think that you've been through what you've been through because you look as great as you do. Oh, thank you. How many times have you probably been approached and people don't understand that you've been through things that you've been through? And so, you know what? What I'm going to do is we're going to let them know so you people who are not sure who Miss Trakeisha Sanders is, you um, experienced the devastation with your baby. Correct. Seven mm -hmm. months. Seven months? Yes. I murdered by his dad. Right on. Yes. And, you know, with that, you've been through so many different trials and tribulations, and the book definitely gives you all the tea. Oh. The book good. gives you the tea. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, also, you as a son, that was your brother. How was that experience for you? I mean, you know, as a kid, you know, you don't really think about it too much. But then, you know, when you grow up, you know, it's like, you know, my brother gone, you know, and it happened. And, you know, it's, you know, messed up way. So now, you know, as thinking about it, mom accomplished so much. And, yes. You know, it's just a blessing. Right on. I would definitely agree. I would definitely agree that it is a blessing. Mm -hmm. And you turn your nightmare into a mission, which I do know that you started a new foundation. Correct. It's Courtney's Child Abuse Foundation. Um, with that, we're trying to raise money to help parents that lost their kids due to child, child abuse. Also, kids that have been neglected. Also, trying to get the teenagers off the streets, start teen nights for them. Mm -hmm. um, just to get them off the streets and show them, you know, there is a way to life more than streets, drugs, and all of that stuff. Also to help people, younger females that have kids for men that aren't too... Mm -hmm. I don't know what to say. Well, you know, and wrapped up, and like I remember when I first met you, you were talking about your mission to help other mothers notice the signs yeah. of the, your partner, which is very important. You have to notice their behaviors, and some things we can eliminate when we know the signs. Know the signs of if they're on drugs, if they have mental health issues. It's just very important. So by you having this book, by you having this foundation, by you having this mission, you can help individuals who are in relationships and denying that they're in a relationship with a person who needs help. You know, um, I watch the news and you see so many people who are living a life with someone who take their own life. All right. You know, and you've experienced this head on. Not that it was your life, but your child lives your life, I can only imagine. So it's like taking a part of your life and going in the grave. All right. You have to pay attention to the signs. I mean, this was a person that I laid down with, mm -hmm. lived with, um, was what? engaged to. So, yeah, and I would have never thought in a million years that that would happen. And it wasn't the stepfather. It was his biological child. Correct. So, I mean, you have to pay attention to everything. Watch who you leave your kids with at all times. I mean, just pay attention to all the signs, the Staying out at late, not come, staying out late, not coming home at all. The mm -hmm. alcohol, the the weed smoking, all of that leads to that. You just have to pay attention. You have to pay attention and watch who you keep your kids around. I mean, I think that is so true. And you know, for me, I was single for so long um, because of me having a child, mm -hmm. 
And when her father and I didn't make it, you know, I would try to get in relationships, but in the back of my mind, I always had that conscious, like, oh, no, I don't know if I could have this person around my child for so long. So it was me. It looks like I was, un it could have looked like as if I was unstable, but what it was, it was me being a mother trying to protect this child, mm -hmm. you know? And I would have thought that if I would have been in a relationship with her biological father, that she would have been safe. But for you, that wasn't even the case. Right. If you read, I mean, if you read the book, I have. it breaks down everything, you know. I have. I, he, it seems like he was a caregiver. He was at home. I mean, he was minding the child. Correct. And so, you know, you were out there working. You was working a lot of hours, mm -hmm. you know. And I remember the, and you stated in the book, the day that this happened, that you came home. Correct. You was just coming in, helping mom get something to eat, and left right back out. Correct. Went straight back to work. Went straight back to work. I got home, I was getting a phone call saying that my baby was turning blue in the face. And I'm like, automatically I'm thinking, Trey Wine, because Trey Wine mm. used to get sick a lot. So I'm like, he turning blue. What you did him? What you did him? He was like, I'm shaking him. I'm shaking him. The, the milk coming up from out his nose. I'm like, call the ambulance. I got there before the ambulance. When I got there, my baby laying in my NT arms just like, laid out his arms just dangling it's like and the, the head of people say oh he possibly dying you know what i'm saying and you all kind of stuff just going through the head but when i got to the hospital i try to help him like i'm like he didn't do that no way right. I, I read that in yeah the like and then he decided to turn himself in i still was behind him behind because him. i didn't believe it because you didn't believe like, it like trayvon was three at the time and mm -hmm. trayvon would always be like mom Baby Courtney fell on the stairs. Baby Courtney fell on the stairs. So you got to realize that's what I thought for years. Mm -hmm. And all my family members was like, well, my mama and other people was like, you stupid. This boy killed your child. But once I got all of it, you know, gathered everything myself, went to reading them autopsy reports. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. What was your mechanism for surviving doing this? It's hard. Uh, what is something that I you find? Did you work more? Did you find yourself working even more after this happened? Yeah, I mean, I had to go to counseling for a year. I had to go to counseling for a year before I could even get my kids back. Oh. So that's how you know messed up it was. And once I got them back, my oldest son, of course, his dad fought me for uh, custody. Okay. And we, till this day, we still going at it. Like so, it's just a struggle. It's hard, and that's why I talk to other parents. That. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to females now, actually, which, you know, they were scared to come on the show. They didn't want to put their business out here. But I talk to pe females now that's going through the same thing I went through and asking me what to do. And I'm like, before you be like me and have to bury a child, you got to get out that situation. Yes, Great. it's very important to get out. No matter how much you love them, your kids come first, no matter and, what. And, you know, that's where you have to stay in that survival mode. You have to begin to just ask yourself, why am I here? You know, but stick around because we're going to go on a quick commercial break. And then when we come back, we'll have more with you, Tapisha, and your son, Trayvon. Thank you, guys, and we'll be right back. Slidell, Kenner, Laplace, and surrounding areas can be a part of the Renata Collins Loving Wisdom Show studio audience. Go to www.renatacollinstv.com. When putting together the Mighty Men Show, my major goal have always been to to spotlight those who are making a difference, men who are visionary, leaders, and it's for themselves, but for the community, because it's the community that is affected by the leader's choices, the leader's plans. So, I'm like, Renata, let's begin to cultivate power. Let's begin and cultivate love and wisdom. But where is it? Where is love? Where is wisdom? And it's in mighty men. And when, when I really, 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 really think about it, I thought about it just being men. 
but then I brought it all the way back to where mankind. There are mighty women, there are mighty men, but just to sum it up, you just call it mighty men, and it's a force. Welcome back to the Renata Collins Love and Wisdom Show, where we are here with Trakeisha Sanders, the authors of A Mother's Cry, and her son, Trayvon Sanders. We also have joining us for the very first time, Miss Sunshine Best. And the reason why I brought Miss Sunshine on is because she says she know all about surviving as well. Just like Miss Trakeisha, just like her son, just like I am, and also Miss Sunshine. So what we have to do is be able to, like Miss Trakeisha said earlier, understand the signs, understand what your journey is, and how you can turn your nightmare into a mission. So you get a mentor, you get the book because there's helpful information, there's a story, and maybe if there's something that you can identify with, it can help you prevent from doing the same and making the same decisions. You know, Trayvon, I would like to ask you one more time, you know, how is it that you're feeling now? Or is it anything that you feel that you could have done to prevent the situation? Um, I feel, now I just feel, you know, my brother's gone, you know, I had to deal with it. Um, but as far as preventing the situation, um, I don't feel like that was nothing I could do. Right on, because you were three, right? Yeah, I was three, so, you know. Let me ask you a question. How are you surviving? What is something that you're doing now to help you deal with it? Because I'm, maybe at three, if it wasn't such devastating, you probably wouldn't have remembered it, yeah. but because it's something that has is being relived and be relived, it's something that you know constantly probably reminding you. Yeah. So how are you dealing with the survival? My mom, she gets me through everything. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, without her, it's no me. Oh, that is just so <laughs> great. I I totally understand that, you know, and I can't. I really can't imagine losing a sibling because I haven't. Yeah. And I know that sometimes, you know, they get on your nerve and they, 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 they just do too much sometimes. But, you know, if they're gone, it's like, you know what, I would, I would enjoy to have that opportunity to tell him, stop, leave me alone, or to understand how his voice sounds. I remember you said that in the book. You don't know how his voice will be. You don't know how he would have grown up to be this type of, what type of person he would be now. And so that's why you have this mission, I can imagine, so that people can be able to hear the voice of their growing child. All right, and don't have to visit a graveyard on birthdays and days that it happened and holidays because it's hurtful and it's painful. And that's not something you want to go through. So how is the relationship with you two? I heard him say that, you know, you get him through a lot. And that's pretty good because sometimes I, I've, you watch movies, you see people, sometimes devastation brings people apart or it can either bring them together. And it's pretty good. And I would just ask that you guys continue to, you know, grow. And people make mistakes and we don't have the ability to have binoculars to see into the future. And it's great that you guys have that relationship mm -hmm. that you can mend and still love each other after such a devastation. Yes. You know? So I have Miss Sunshine here. Miss Sunshine, as you was here earlier hearing about their story, I know that you have a story of your own. Would you like to share with us? Yeah, I can, I'm happy to share. And thank you very much for having me and for having these guests because I think it's, it's extremely important to get these type of stories out mm -hmm. because we are not alone and there's right. other people out there going through the same thing and they're keeping it secret. And I think that's a dangerous and uh, toxic thing to do yes. spiritually as well as for the community. So I think bringing people together like this and being brave enough to share your story is helping yourself as well as helping other people in the community. So I commend all of you for you having them and you guys being brave enough to Thank talk. Thank you. Thank you. So, so tell them about some so of the things. For that my story, I could relate on different points because I grew up in foster care and I did not have 
the mother and father situation that a lot of people grew up with. So I had moved homes a lot, and mm -hmm. that had actually taken me through three countries before I turned 18. So I'm from Barbados, and I grew up in Toronto. I spent some time in New York, and from physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, emotional abuse, torture, being put outside with no clothes and mm -hmm. cigarettes being put, like all sorts of horrible stories that you see in movies and read about, that happens to us and foster kids, and mm -hmm. this is, it's a real thing. And mm -hmm. so it's... I, find, I found at some point you have two options. You okay. can either let it crush you. Right. Or you can gather yourself and the strength you can get from mm -hmm. the situation and let it build you up. So I right think on. that there's a certain, a certain amount of trauma that can make somebody stronger. That is so true. And I think that people who have gone through things have a lot more to offer mm -hmm. in terms of strength to other people because they can empathize. They can relate. So when someone else is going through something horrible, you can look at them and say, hey, I've been there. I understand. And so now that person doesn't feel alone. Yes. So. And, you know, you brought up something that you guys have so much in common with. Um, like she said, she's been in foster care. You've had, you've been in foster care. You've had your children to go and be in foster care. And I also remember you talked about the cigarette burns in the book. So there's some of the same thing. So we're not too much different. Mm -hmm. I've also been in foster care. You know? So we all share some of the same experiences here. And it could definitely make us stronger. So it's not about what you go through when you come out of the situation so therefore we are here and you see us today on the renata collins love and wisdom show as survivors stay tuned and we'll be back with you <laughs> new orleans slidell kenner laplace and surrounding areas come be a part of the renata collins love and wisdom show studio audience Go to www.RenataCollinsTV.com. Did you know that each Dickie's Barbecue Pit is locally owned by your very own pit master? We smoke our meats on site every day. Hold up, I love this part. Chopped or sliced, piled high on a toasted bun, and call it done. It's not processed, it's a process, and has been since 1941. Come to Dickie's, where we speak barbecue. Hello, my live studio audience. Once a month, I film the Renata Collins Love and Wisdom Show. It's fun, it's learning, it's laughter, it's awakening, it's love and wisdom, and it's me, your girl, Renata Collins. You'll see things that TV never sees. You'll get to meet my guests, ask questions, take pictures, and more. Go to www.RenataCollegeTV.com. Welcome back to the Love and Wisdom Show, and we're in the Wisdom Break, as always, with me, your girl, Renata, and Pastor Tyrone Jefferson. You know, I'm always happy to do this part with you, right? Oh, I'm so honored. I'm always honored. Thank you. So listen, earlier we were talking with Trakeisha Sanders, the author of A Mother's Cry. We also had Miss Sunshine Best, who's still here with us during this wisdom break. So right now, we know that it's important to understand how we can survive. And when we were on commercial break, I was speaking with Sunshine, and she was talking about the three important fundamentals of surviving. Tell me more. The three points that were important for me growing up that mm -hmm. I had to put together and I wasn't able to articulate till I got older was number one, no matter how bad my situation was, I had to figure out a way out of it. So I created a plan. Now a plan without a deadline is a dream. Right a on. A dream is fine because a dream can inspire, motivate you to the next action, but it's not going to happen until you put a deadline on it and then it becomes a goal. So create a, a plan with a deadline. So make a goal for yourself so you can get out of it and you have something to focus on that's not the negative. You know what? And I definitely do agree with that. I am a big person on the vision board. Mm -hmm. And not only do my vision board has images, but it has words, but they do have a deadline. Mm -hmm. And um, when I do my nonprofit organization work, I tell them, if you do not put a deadline on it, mm -hmm. it has, like, it's inevitable to manifest. Absolutely. So therefore, if you want a manifestation, you have to say, hey, I'm looking for this at this, at time. this time. I know you know all about it. Bible. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about right Ooh. vision. 
and make it plain. Yes. There you go. Yes. And so I'm big on that. Hi, Becca, too, and too. But let me tell you this. Even with my vision board, I write Ephesians 3 and 20 because I want now unto him that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond my imagination can even think and ask for. So therefore, if I want this, mm, you know, I don't want the house or cars anymore. I just have to say that. I, I just love the luxury living without all the major expenses. So therefore, I know that if I want this S550, that I can get a 2018 mm -hmm. instead of a 2016, mm -hmm. you know, because I said Ephesians 3 and 20. What do you think about that, Pastor? That's the word. The Bible talks about, you know, if you delight yourself in the Lord, that he shall give you the desires of mm -hmm. your heart. Mm -hmm. So if that's your desire, hey, if it's will, he'll give it to you. Right on. So therefore, we have to survive. Number two. Point number two, what, exactly what's happening here, mm -hmm. create a community. Because the community happens to benefit twofold. Number one, community from your family would be ideal, but not everyone mm -hmm. has a family, as we've already heard. And, or the family may not be on your level or be there to support you. So you have to find people who will support you. Well, can you, I say something? See you bigger than, you're big, than you see yourself. I've learned family is not always blood. Family right. is the people who you, who you choose. choose. You can choose your family. Many people say you can't choose your family. I disagree. That, I can choose my as family. As a foster care, I am absolutely in disagreement with this statement. You can make your family you whatever can. you choose. Your, I have friends who are closer to me than my biological family. You so. can't pick your kin, folks, but you can pick your family. So, <laughs> so good. Indeed. Point three. Point, Point three. three. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. And that actually in, entails the first two, because making goals helps you. Building community also helps you. Not only does it help you with, in terms of feeling supported, it's better to have two eyes and two ears out in the world helping you look for opportunities mm -hmm. and connecting you and networking for you. But being kind to yourself also means accepting that you have shortcomings. We all have yes. questions and blind spots. And not so, to beat yourself up. Exactly. Not to beat yourself so hold up. on to that and recognize this is where you are right now. And no matter how bad you feel about where you are, mm -hmm. you're further ahead than people who haven't even tried. That's Ooh. Bible. Well, tell me about that. The steps of a good man uh, oh, are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his ways. Hmm. And I do love that, too. Yeah. And I love that you say be kind to yourself, oh, because that's something I didn't learn natural, to do. Mm -hmm. Right on. We we we're all connections. You see, community happens everywhere. You just got to open it up. <laughs> so, and you know, I didn't learn to be kind to myself until about the last two years. Black women never take time for themselves. And I'm sure they... Because well, they we can't say never, because I've learned. But, and I'm black, girl. You're, you're growing and you're progressing, yes. but something happened. You said it only happened the last two years. You've been right. a black woman for a minute. So we need to support and remind each other, as you said in the previous show. Mm -hmm. We have to support support each other and remind yes. them out for each other. Yes. It helps you to be connected and it helps them to feel supported. Awesome. Well, you know, guys, I'm always excited to have the wisdom break, especially here with my co-host, Pastor Tyrone Jefferson. You already know, I can have Sunshine Best. So, guys, she is. I mean, very good information, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you were able to come. And I want to thank you guys for tuning in. And we'll be back next week with more for the Nada Collins Love and Wisdom Show. Slidell, Kenner, Laplace, and surrounding areas can be a part of the Renata Collins Love and Wisdom Show studio audience. Go to www.renatacollinstv.com. Did you know that each Dickie's barbecue pit is locally owned by your very own pit master? We smoke our meats on site every day. Hold up, I love this part. Chopped or sliced, piled high on a toasted bun, and call it done. It's not processed, it's a process, and has been since 1941. Come to Dickie's, where we speak barbecue. To join my live studio audience, once a month I film the Renata Collins Love and Wisdom Show. It's fun, it's learning, it's laughter, it's awakening, it's love and wisdom, and it's me, your girl Renata Collins. You'll see things the TV never sees. You'll get to meet my guests, ask questions, take pictures, and more. Go to www.renatacollegetv.com. Are you ready for real talk with real people? It's me, your girl, Renata Collins. Come out to be a part of my live studio audience. Let's talk success and failure, love and wisdom, and so much more. For more information, go to www.renatacollinstv.com. Are you looking to advance your skills in broadcasting and media? If so, 
join the Renata Collins Loving Business Show Internship Program. For more information, go to www.renatacollinstv.com. New Orleans, Slidell, Kenner, Laplace, and surrounding areas come be a part of the Renata Collins Loving Wisdom Show studio audience. Go to www.renatacollinstv.com. Remember, tune in next week with more of me, Renata Collins. was on heroin. It was oxys for me. I used crack cocaine. Every hour, 13 people die from drug or alcohol abuse. Don't kid yourself. Addiction is an epidemic. We all know what happens when you don't deal with addiction. Someone dies. Or even worse, they hurt others. Addiction is a disease. We are the addiction network. And if you've been trying to quit your addiction to drugs or alcohol without any luck, then you need to call the number on your screen now. We'll connect you with someone who's been where you are. You can't beat addiction on your own. So make the call now. The call is free, the consultation is free, and the referral is free. If you have private insurance, your treatment could be covered with no out-of-pocket cost. So call the Addiction Network now. Get the help you need. I wish my family had insurance. I could have got the best help available. Recently involved in an accident or fall and experiencing pain? We're open four days a week, some days 7.30 to 7.30. Call me at 476-PAIN. One call, that's all, to me, chiropractor Dr. James Gordon of the Alabama Injury and Pain Clinic. The choice is yours. Welcome to Taking the Kingdom with Samuel and R.C. Blakes, Jr. This is an outreach of the new home family of churches. Taking the Kingdom is the prophetic ministry of Bishop Robert Blake, Sr. Since 1964, today the mantle and mission has passed to his sons, R.C. Blakes, Jr. and Samuel Blakes. Together they are bringing the full gospel to a world dead in religion, teaching the word of God to the saints, raising up powerful churches, and demonstrating the power of the Spirit to a world in bondage. Put Satan on notice. We are taking the kingdom. Blessings and favor to you, my friends. What a blessing and privilege it is uh, to be able to come into so many living rooms, hospital rooms, bedrooms, uh, wherever you are, even to those who are behind prison bars. I got good news for you. You may be locked in, but the Holy Ghost is not locked out. God can reach you right where you are. Thank you for tuning in. You have tuned in on the right day for the right word. God has a word that is divinely orchestrated and designed to bring change to your life. I want you to sit back, fasten your seatbelts. We're going into the sanctuary of New Home Ministries, and uh, God's getting ready to bless you. Let's go in. God bless. Not going to be long, I promise. I preached hard in Baton Rouge, so, you know, such as I have, give I unto thee. Joshua 3 and 5. Uh, I want to talk to you just for a few minutes. God tells Joshua to tell the people something that is so important as they get ready to cross over into a different arena, as they get ready to cross over. Uh, their crossing over really symbolizes our crossing over tonight. And God tells Joshua to tell the people something. And as Joshua told them, I tell you tonight. In Joshua 3 and 5, the Lord simply said this. He said, uh, through Joshua, he says, Joshua told the people to sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will work wonders among you. 
different version says Joshua told the people consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you and for you sanctify yourselves if you don't mind touch them and tell neighbor tell them as you go into this new year the word is very simple tell them sanctify yourself and what is sanctification? Sanctification is the process of, by which you and I uh, become more like our God. It ought to be the desire of every believer. You know, somehow the desire, Pastor Payton, of the, of the believer has been watered down in the church today. And what we desire are temporary things. We desire, we come to church and we come to God looking for cars, houses, and things. But the ultimate desire of every believer should be to live and lead a sanctified life. Can I tell you something about sanctification? Sanctification is not what you think it is. Uh, when I was a kid, there was a certain church that we passed by, and, and when we passed by, we'd say, that's that sanctified church. That's that sanctified church. How many of y'all remember that? That's that sanctified church. Uh, and we called them sanctified because they wore long dresses and tied their heads up and didn't wear makeup. And we said, that's that sanctified church. But the truth is, sanctification has nothing to do with what you got on you. It has everything to do with what you have in you. And the sad reality is many of us are dressed up on the outside while we're messed up on the inside. And as a kid, we always said, that's that sanctified church. And the truth is, every church ought to be a sanctified church. If you don't mind, tell somebody, tell them, I want to be a part of a sanctified church. Sanctification is our gift back to God. God gives us our lives. And sanctification is literally us giving that life back to God. Saying, now Lord, you take me. And you make me what 